going to do in the next couple of videos is take a look at compression, uh, understand how it works, what it is, and then focus on the compressors that Logic offers, and more importantly, the lap platinum compressor as known in Logic 8. So if you load up the compressor just onto a normal channel, you'll be shown something like this. Now, compression itself is also known as dynamic range compression. Um, this basically simply reduces the volume of loud sounds uh, that peaks above a set threshold, and then it also amplifies the quiet sounds that are below that threshold as well. So when I'm using that term threshold, it's uh, basically a level that you're setting the compressor to then suddenly react at. So um, if you set, um, if you imagine you set a bar at a certain height, and any audio range that goes over that bar, the compressor will then react and reduce the peaks that go over the bar, and then the peaks that are below the bar will naturally be turned up by the master gain here that you have. So we're just going to look over the controls first. Uh, you see here you've got certain circuit types. Now this is Logic's sort of recreation of old analog circuits, circuit trees within the compressors. They've given you quite a range here. Um, the Platinum ones is their own one. Uh, the classic AR and AUs are of vintage recreations. Uh, the VCA is voltage controlled amplified sort of circuitry. Um, to be fair, they're all amplified circuitry, so it's a little bit misleading that one. And then you've got your Opto one down the bottom. Uh, it's, like, it's like a warmer version of the Platinum. To be honest, I normally use the Opto and the Platinum, and the rest I don't really bother around with. So once you've selected the certain circuit type you're after, um, then you can move on and look at the certain features we've got down here. So, as I said, on the right hand here we've got the compressor threshold, and this basically is, is normally set in dBs uh, on normal compressors. Basically, the lower the threshold means the larger the portion of sound is going to be compressed. So if you have the threshold right down here, you're lowering the bar so low that the majority of the audio signal is going to peak over the threshold and therefore will be compressed at the set ratio that you set. So moving on to the ratio aspect of the compressor, uh, this is basically dictating the amount of gain reduction that is going to be applied to the audio signal that peaks above your set threshold. So basically what that's meaning is uh, if you have a ratio setting of let's say 4 to 1, that means the input level is going to be 4 decibels over the set threshold and you can tell it's going to be like that with the gain reduction meter here. So therefore what's going to happen is it's going to reduce the gain by 3 dB leaving the output 1 decibel over the thresh set threshold limit. So in all in all it's turning the whole thing up. So the, the high peaks are getting squashed and the lower peaks are getting turned up. So you're, you're getting an optimum output level there. So I've got a diagram here uh, to show you guys. I'll bring it up on the screen now. And this is uh, hopefully going to help you guys get your head around threshold ratios and input levels, all that sort of stuff. So this is basically explaining on the bottom here you've got your input level in decibels and then you've got your output level going up the side here as well. Now your threshold is, as I said, that's the, that's the bar you're setting uh, of where your comp compressor is going to react on what audio peaks and stuff like that. And then these are the ratios. So a 1 to 1 is going to have no effect whatsoever. A 2 to 1 is going to compress all the loud peaks, reduce them by a decibel. Same with the 4 dB here, it's going to reduce them by 3 decibels as I explained earlier. And this little sign here, that's, uh, that's basically an infinity ratio, that's the limiting that we're going on about as well. And you can see the line, how drastically, or what drastic measures it takes on the audio signal. You can see it's literally just clipping everything and leaving it at one sustained volume. Now, stuff for radio, playing and all that sort of stuff, limiters are, are in place because you just want to get the loudest amount of volume um, without it distorting, and there's not much dynamic range uh, as, as far as peaks and troughs and stuff like that. If you're looking to obtain more dynamic range within your music, limiting is probably not something I'd use. I'd use a sort of a less harsh compression, and then you are going to get that sort of peaks and troughs and volume levels throughout your track, which keep it nice and interesting. So that's uh, thresholds, ratios, input and output levels. We're going to now take a look at the rest of the compressor.